What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over some issues that I've had with my Xbox Series S after about a year and a half, two years of ownership. Even though this thing is darn near perfect, there are still some issues. I have had some annoyances with it and I just want to let you know what those are in case you've had them, in case you're kind of on the edge about buying this thing. Maybe these are make or breaks for you, but let's go ahead and get straight into the video. All right, guys, so let's get nice and cozy as we talk about our favorite console, the Xbox Series S. Now, right off the bat, the main issue that I've had with this thing is connectivity issues. I want to say over the last four to five months, I've started to get this error where it says I'm not connected to the internet, that I can't play Xbox Live. I can't even play video games that don't need internet connections because it says I'm not connected. Every device in the house works fine. Everything is totally online. My computer, my iPad, my phone is connected to wi-fi but for some reason the xbox doesn't connect i've had to reboot the xbox it still has the same issue i've had to disconnect the power button i've had to disconnect uh, and reset the router and sometimes that gets it working but not all the time this is super annoying when you're just trying to jump on real quick for like a quick game maybe in between you know doing chores maybe a quick break off of work it can be super annoying and frustrating especially when you have a busy life and friends that jump on xbox and they want to play with you even though you don't get on that much i'm just speaking from personal experience and it is the most annoying freaking thing. I've absolutely been fed up with it. I'm like, man, this thing was darn near perfect. Now it's giving me this issue. A real big bummer and a setback, to be honest. After, you know, rebooting it a couple times, I'm plugging some wires and it's good to go. It's like it never happened. I did have a few times though, where it wouldn't come back online. I just left it for a few days and I would go back and it was still doing the same issue. I didn't do the unplugging and the resetting of the router those times. So maybe that had to do with it. I'm not hundred percent sure. The times I've gotten it to work though, I've had to do the unplugging plugging of the cables out of the Xbox, resetting of the router, etc. But it's just annoying and it's kind of unpredictable. I haven't had it all too much, maybe three or four times, but it's been super inconvenient. And as you guys can see today, yesterday and today were one of those times where it didn't come on. I didn't want to do all the resetting stuff. So I just didn't even bother and didn't even play it, which is kind of a bummer because I should be able just to boot it up and be able to play no problem. And considering I have two games that kind of need online access, I wasn't able to play anything. With that being said, the next biggest annoyance is the storage factor. I can only fit about two games on this. I love Battlefield 2042. That thing's always loaded on here. Forza, Assassin's Creed, these are all big memory games. And if you need an internet connectivity and you only have two games on your Xbox, you're kind of SOL. Needless to say, you can get a fast SSD, which will allow you to play games. With that being said, it's gonna cost you more for that SSD than it's gonna cost you to get the Xbox Series X. So so in that case, it does make a little bit more sense. To me, I kind of have to pre-plan what games I'm going to be playing throughout the weekend, maybe what kind of guess what games my friends are going to be wanting to play. I got to make sure I move games from internal to external and then move the game I'm going to be playing from external to internal. It does take a little bit, maybe an hour or two. What takes the longest is getting the game from external to internal. Moving the game from internal to external takes about 20, 30 minutes. Not terrible, but just having to pre-plan is kind of a bummer sometimes. Like I said, sometimes you're in a rush. You want that quick hit but having to kind of pre-plan kind of sucks video games are supposed to be spontaneous and not really a chore but with that what can you expect you paid 200 dollars for that console it's still powerful you're still getting the graphics easy workaround for sure in my opinion now the next biggest issue with games with the connectivity kind of issue i've also had times where i'm booting up a game and it says that i don't own it that the purchaser needs to sign in etc now this could just be something on my end maybe i purchased it on a different profile which i don't think i did in particular black ops cold war my my brother and i kind of game shared it did something anyways it stopped working on my xbox for a while couldn't play it said i didn't own it said someone had to download it said someone had to sign in and do it i'm the one who bought it on my my profile don't know why it didn't let me play and one day out of randomness I uninstalled it reinstalled it and it worked and I did go through some reviews on the Xbox store and it said that if you're getting that error that all you had to do is go through the manage game add-ons and see if something was checked or unchecked um, I did not do that. I deleted it and then re-downloaded it, which took forever. Um, and that got it to work, but it's just another annoyance to where, you know, downloading digital only console, you kind of lose a lot of time. One of the other issues I've also had, if you've had that issue, drop it below. Let me know what you did to fix it. So I guess I've kind of already touched on this, but just the lack of flexibility is also kind of an issue primarily with the games, you know, storage wise, if your buddy brings over a game and you want to pop it in real quick, you can't. 
considering it's a digital only console. This console is definitely not for your crazy everyday gamer. If you're constantly switching between games, I wouldn't recommend this, just being 100% honest. If you have a little bit of patience, if you don't mind switching from you know internal to external, waiting a little bit to play games, kind of pre-planning your gaming, which is kind of annoying to even say that or kind of even have to do that, then this still might be the option for you. But if you're gonna be switching over you know, between tons of different games, you're not gonna be happy with this thing considering you're gonna have to wait a long time, you're gonna have to re-download games, pop them in, etc. That's just kind of my two cents now that I'm realizing this and now a year and a half, two years down the road. I actually might be getting at a Series X just for content for you guys. And I bet you I'm going to be in love with the fact that I can just play however many games I want, more than two games at a time. I could have a physical disc if someone happens to have that on hand, which no one that I've come across in recent years has. But it's just nice to have. The only thing I'm not looking forward to is the, you know, bigger footprint. But hey, all this stuff for another video. Lack of flexibility has been an issue. Like I said, you have to kind of be a little more bit more disciplined and um, really wanting to to play and uh, earn the right to play right if you're gonna go through all this effort to go through those workarounds now with those issues aside don't let this deter you from buying this Xbox it didn't deter me even though now would I go back and repurchase this thing a hundred percent yes for what you're getting for the price range it outweighs the cons I guess there are workarounds like I said you just reboot your Xbox reboot your internet it's really not that big of a deal I haven't been wanting to play that bad to do those in those situations I've had other things I could have been doing so I guess it was kind of good it was kind of like a hey you go do what you need to do rather than jump on Xbox right now uh, store just you know move throughout the day if you want to play if you have a game that's not internal and you know you're gonna play it that night or the weekend you know just move it over while you're doing something let it run in the background let it load and you know be good to go for you buy extra storage that way you can have games on the external rather than having to download them from the web also lastly if you're kind of on the edge of this just look for a place that has a good return policy Costco has 90 day returns maybe look for a warranty in case your Xbox does continue to have issues like this you can return it and your investment would be safe there are these extra workarounds i personally wouldn't let that deter me from buying it don't let it deter you from buying this thing it's super powerful it's lightning fast it looks amazing overall for the price point you can't beat it black friday is right around the corner i highly recommend you pick it up then again try to pick it up from a place that has a good return policy or offers a warranty also christmas is coming up so it's an awesome gift for your boyfriends husbands fiancés son daughter family whatever it is so definitely worth the pickup aside from those minute minor issues anyways guys that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video i hope you liked it more content to come hit that like button hit that subscribe button guys i will catch you in the next one